I know you want to know who was on the, on the show, so I'm going to tease this out a little bit. The moment I mentioned that last name, everyone who's a part of Christendom, everyone who's part of church life, you're going to know immediately that name rings loud, that bell rings loud. And uh, I know you are waiting in anticipation. I want to make sure that you uh, shout it out uh, and let everyone know uh, that, that we are on and that this is a special episode, special a podcast and without any further ado you all let me go ahead and uh, do the preliminaries I've already told you what we're getting ready to do this is a PK moment it's about that PK life baby what it means to be one the view from our pew <laughs> the view from our side welcome to the Clarence stores leadership podcast a podcast about becoming 1% better every day. And now your host, yours truly, Clarence Stowers. Hey everyone, this is Clarence E. Stowers Jr., host of the Clarence Stowers Leadership Podcast. A podcast about becoming 1% better every day so that you can level up in all areas of life. Hey, what's going on, everyone? I know it's midday, Wednesday, Thursday, and it's time to take a lunch break because we uh, have something special in store. So while I set the table and while we get the parameters correct, you're in for a treat today. And the reason I believe that you are in for a treat revolves around I have with me on the stream a few guests and before I introduce who they are um, what we have in common what we have in common is that we are all PKs we are pastors kids and we, we have a much different experience growing up than anyone else and I can personally attest to this and as a PK the same person we lived with who took care of us saw the good side of us, the not so good side of us, it was also our fathers, it was also our leaders. And uh, we have many friends uh, who have walked this walk. And so over the course of the next few months, you're going to hear their stories. You're going to hear how being a preacher's kid shaped their lives, and you're going to also hear um, the challenging side of what it means to be a preacher's kid. And uh, this is one of the first of many episodes to come, so here's what I need for you to do. My God, I want you to first share this out on your timelines. Uh -huh. I know you want to know who's on the, on the line, but I need you to start sharing this out on your respective timelines. We're talking about PK life, PK life, baby. And this is part of uh, the Clarence Stores Leadership Podcast. And I know you want to know who was on the, on the show, so I'm going to tease this out a little bit. Uh, the moment I mentioned that last name, everyone who's a part of Christendom, everyone who's a part of church life, you're going to know immediately that name rings loud. That bell rings loud. And uh, I know you are waiting in anticipation. I want to make sure that you uh, shout it out uh, and let everyone know uh, that, that we are on and that this is a special episode, special uh, podcast. And without any further ado, you all, let me go ahead and uh, do the preliminaries. I've already told you what we're getting ready to do. This is a PK moment. It's about that PK life, baby. What it means to be one. The view from our pew. <laughs> the view from our side. And so with that stated, I want to officially welcome you to the Clarence Stores Leadership Podcast. All right, y'all. I'm back, man. I am excited to welcome uh, to our first video version of our podcast, you all, man, 
Look who I have with me, hanging out with me. Yo, I have. Yo, 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 come yo. on. I told you that lit better name rings loud in Christendom, Baptist circles, church circles, and so, I'm so you, you excited. Really introduced yourself. You really did your own introduction. <laughs> right. <laughs> oh, you know it, man. Sometimes you gotta stay a little bit, little bit professional, but you know how it goes. That's the that's the podcast stuff. But y'all, I have with me, uh, and I get a chance to introduce my friend, my little bro. I'll start with my little bro, the legacy carrying millennial trailblazing. Scholar with a holler, young man with an old soul. <laughs> yeah, that's him. That part is him. <laughs> this, that part is him. That's part is him. A historian and a poet, but an urban theologian, y'all. I have with me today the Reverend Doctor Ernest. Franklin, I gotta say your government name. Don't do, that. Don't do that. Don't do that. The F, the F was always mysterious. Oh that. my bad. <laughs> There's so much history there, man. We're gonna get into that. So much history there. But we're gonna get into that. Ernest E. F. Ledbetter, the third, and I have with me also his big sister. Mm-hmm. Ernisha Ledbetter Miller. Give a shout out to my my fellow legacy carrier, Pastor John Miller, and I have my baby sis with me. And uh, we we call her. I ain't gonna tell you what we call her. Uh, I can't share your nickname. All right. Thank you. Okay, I can't share her nickname, y'all. She she's good and grown. I'll share her nieces if you share hers. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's messed up, boy. Oh man! I got, about, I got about five of them I can share. You got about five of them you can share. All right, we're gonna we're gonna keep it we're gonna keep it PG, and and if we get a chance to do that, and um, we'll do that. Marcy, man, I want to first say first and foremost, thank you, Marcy Project managed uh, this uh, from beginning to end. And if you're in need of a project manager to manage all of your projects, affairs, social media. Uh, we'll have information about Marcy in the show notes. We just decided today as PKs that we were going to go live. We were supposed to record, but I got some incredible people, and we're going to talk a little bit about that PK life. So go ahead and um, make sure you share this out. Uh, make sure that you uh, tag a few people. If you know some PKs, uh, get them on. Get them on. Tell them they need to be here. And if you know some that we would like to interview. They can connect with Marcy, and she'll get the ball to roll it. Man, all right, we got your boo on. Your boo is on. And <laughs> What's up, John? Good to see you, man. What's going on? My wife, she, we were just talking. I just happened to go on Facebook. Nobody told me nothing. PKs, baby. We just decided today in the moment to come on and be a part of this. So uh, tag every PK that you know, and we would greatly appreciate it. But I want you to give a snapshot into the lives of those who walk this path. So with that stated, I want to get started. Man, we'll start uh, with uh, the uh, beautiful sister. We're going to start with you, Ernisha. Uh, do me a favor. Tell us a little bit about yourself. Tell us a little bit about yourself. Um, I'm older than him. <laughs> I'm not his twin. <laughs> uh, everybody thinks we're twins, but but we're not. Um, let's see. I'm the third of the four. Technically, not the middle child, but the middle child. I'm the baby girl, and um, life was good. It still is good. I'm married for eight years to the wonderful and amazing Dr. John Miller II. I have two beautiful children. And um, man, I am finally learning to just live and just be, if that makes sense. Makes um, a lot of sense. Man, I have made some 
drastic changes in my life over the past week. <laughs> and I'm I'm happy about it. And I'm okay with it. And I'm at the point where if you ain't okay, that's okay. Because mm. I'm okay. Wonderful. Wonderful. That's, me. that's Big Sus speaking right there. And I tell you, girlfriend, you hit it. I knocked it out of the park. That's a little bit about uh, who Ernisha is, and we're going to hear her incredible story as well. Legacy-bearing brother. Man, so proud of you, my brother. Tell us a little bit. Who is E.F. Let Better the third? I am uh, pastor of Mount Pisgah in two years. It will make, um, in two months, rather than make eight years that I've been the pastor of the church. Um I'm a new up-and-coming artist, got some music on all digital platforms, um, third-generation Black Baptist pastor, uh, youngest pastor of Mount Pisgah's history, uh, and like Sis said, uh, I'm becoming comfortable knowing that I'm not just a preacher. Mm, I love that. I love that. And, and we're certainly going to unpack that as well. And uh, thanks for sharing, especially the artist piece. Man, love it, love it, love it. Last but not least, the baby of the bunch, my baby sus, is on with us. And so she's going to tell us, come on, Marcy, tell us a little bit about who is who is Marcy Wilson. I am the best sister ever. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> no, seriously, I am so excited to be here today. I am Marcy Wilson of MarcyWilson.com, and I am, I love all things, uh, getting, I want to make Jesus famous. That's all I really want to do. And so I want to do that through so many platforms from helping people to write books, helping people, helping them to uh, manage any projects they have going on through social media. And so um, I too was a, uh, as a PK, I grew up, but I was also, a, I'm also a pastor's wife. And when my husband decided, Decided to step away from full-time pastoring that is when I was able to kind of break out I guess and and blossom and see God use me in so many other ways because I had so many other talents that were hitting and so now I am tapping into everything that God has for me so just be on the lookout because I may be coming to a city near, near you and there you have it as you can that's see <laughs> that's right that's right somebody's giving shout outs today man somebody's giving hey, shout outs <laughs> Hey, Mama Lynn. What about me? My son. What about my daughter? Oh, she ain't what playing either. That's right. She <laughs> said, my baby girl, Nisha. Come on, Mama Lynn, better man. Let them folk know you're Queen. proud. Queen. Oh, yeah. Queen is in the house. And there you have it. Uh, we had an introduction of who we have, and this is so wonderful. So if you haven't already shared this out, please do so, so that others can gain value. We want to dive right into it. And my goal today is just to help everyone get to know you uh, a little bit better, kind of know you all like like we do. We know each other in a different but yet special way. And uh, so we want to talk a little bit about uh, expectations. Um, growing up as a preacher's kid, a PK, uh, sometimes there are unrealistic expectations that are placed upon us and it, it, it puts us in a position to whereas we um, are expected to do things that only God himself can do. So what I'd like to hear is tell us about a time when unrealistic expectations were placed on you and, and then how did it make you feel? Let's talk about that. Who's going first? Whoever, whoever, <laughs> whoever grabs the mic first. Uh, I'll say um, I didn't get any. I didn't get any unfair expectations simply as a PK. But once I began preaching, that's when I started to feel the press. Um, I accepted my call at seven years old and began public preaching at twelve. And you never know the damage that it can do to you to hear at 13, 15, even 18, 19, or 20, he good, but he ain't nothing like his dad. Mm. And it's just like, what well, that? I almost cussed. That man been doing this. <laughs> other been episode, this other for 30, episode. 40 years. He been doing it for 30, 40 years, so of course I'm not going to be as seasoned or of the same quality. And so 
that I battled with that for many years until I found my own voice. That is so important, finding your own voice and then having that pressure placed upon you at, at such a young age. Uh, how did you navigate that? What what got you through the the negativity and some of the unrealistic expectations that were placed? Uh, just my father telling me to be myself and, and uh, dad always invested in whatever you were interested in outside of church to develop your own identity. And so I just began to learn how to be comfortable with me. That's wonderful. And and that's the beauty of of having a father who's in ministry who can have, help us navigate that, that rocky terrain. And by sharing how you dealt with it helps greatly. Um, Ernisha, how, how, how did the unrealistic expectations, if there were any, as pastor's kid or pastor's wife, um, how did it make you feel and how do you respond to that? Um, the unrealistic for me was my name is Ernisha. So automatically they assume, oh, she's going to preach too. And, oh, she's going to marry the preacher, which happened to happen. But that wasn't <laughs> why. <laughs> you know, mm-hmm. it happened, but that, it, yeah, that's another, that's another show. Um, the unrealistic for me was I was the one doing the more singing. So if I had a high moment in praise and worship, then here comes somebody saying, oh, yeah, now the word is in your belly. Now bring the word out because you, you sing it. Now, it, it may be true down the line, but that's not where I, I am or was. Um, so it was. it's always a, why you not preaching? Well, when you going to start preaching? Well, that, that's not what, that ain't my ministry. God yeah. called my dad. He called my brother. That's it. You know, and that, that was something that's that I true. always battled with coming up singing my dad was called not me mm. that, and that's just how we live and that's how daddy let us live our life he was called not us yeah yeah now now you said something and i want to stick a pin before we circle back to to marcy you said something that stuck out in, in regards of calling your dad and your granddad i, I think for all your new listeners and, and younger listeners they need to hear a little bit about that Let Better legacy. Mind you, that began on the west side of Chicago. <laughs> Talk a little bit about your granddad and your dad. So granddad um, was probably one of the first mega churches, not just in Chicago, but like everywhere. You know, um, Metropolitan Baptist Church on Washington and Lubbock. Um, he was there for how many years, Frank? 30 years. Yeah, about 30 years. So, huge guy in physical appearance, but a huge guy in ministry. Yeah. And and dad might as well just be him 30, 50 years later, you know, it, it's first of all, the last name itself. You can't go anywhere and say Ledbetter and people not go, you related to, yeah. you know, because of the name. But my dad alone has his own history, his own legacy that I, I am so proud of him for, but it's the name. Yeah. He can tell you more about daddy because I get teary out when I talk about my daddy, so go ahead. Yeah, so, so granddad, uh, shout out to Eddie Williams III, another PK who's now currently pastor in Metropolitan. Granddad pastored there from 1939 to 1969. My God. Uh, and a lot of his ministry is documented in photography by Gordon Parks. They were good friends. A uh, very famous black filmmaker and photographer. Is that the Good uh, Times photographer? Uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And right now, photos of my grandfather, our grandfather, are circulating around Europe and uh, could, you can buy his picture for five thousand dollars because Gordon Parks took it. It's in several of his books. My God, uh, just a, a mammoth of man in ministry. He's about six four, six five, two eighty, deep voice. Uh, they called him the Prince of Preachers. I know for a fact that on one occasion he did a revival in Brazil with an interpreter, uh, and so uh, Dad and I. <laughs> We were sitting in a U-Haul one day moving one of my sisters 
uh, in or out of their apartment. And we were just talking about the blessings of being born into a rich legacy. And I'm a whole punk when my dad starts crying. So we just sitting in the truck crying and just thankful that we got a good name. My God, my God. I, I, I had to go there because I wanted people to know what was in the room and and by understanding the great heritage and the great legacy, it kind of gives uh, context. People who know me know I like to put frames around whatever it is that I'm doing to help people understand it even more so greatly. And we're going to definitely circle back to um, your, your granddad, your dad, and your, your, your granddad was a good friend, the Daddy King, and uh, okay. played a pivotal yeah. role there. We're going to circle yeah. back to that. But uh, Marcy and I uh, were the last of a two stores siblings who grew up uh, in the same household. And by her being the baby of the bunch and the age gap, she's seven years younger than I am. <laughs> That's another episode. <laughs> yes. Mom and daddy was tripping. Oh, my God. Tripping big time. Tripping and dipping. Tripping and dipping. <laughs> My kids got a six-year gap. It, it is oh, a, uh, so they know as well. So being the baby of the bunch, Marcy, carrying the weight of, of the store's name and legacy, unrealistic expectations. Uh, were they placed on you? And if so, how did they make you feel? Yeah, they definitely were. And um, it wasn't from the fam- our family or our parents. It was basically like the outside world. You know, once they find out you are stores, oh, wow, well, then you got to act a certain way. You got to walk a certain way. You, you can't say how you feel. And so I got a lot of flack, probably more so from like outside people. And then when I started not caring about what they had to say, because our mom was, you know how she was, Claire. She was, she was so uh, wonderful in making us uh, aware of who we were. And so um, I know she used to tell me all the time, you know, you know that Psalms 139, you know, you are fearfully and wonderfully made, Marcy. Just be yourself. And so that just kind of helped me to not have the unrealistic expectations of outside people because people will put pressure on you because of the stuff that they can't do. You know, mm. um, none of us could sing. None of us, you know, in our family, that I know that's unheard of for a pastor's family and nobody can sing, you know, like, why aren't you singing? Or why aren't you, you know, doing this? Or why aren't you doing that? I'm like, because God didn't call me to do any of those things. And so when I became comfortable in the skin that I'm in, that's when I saw myself kind of flourish and blossom out. But it came from people. And, you know, people think that you're supposed to act a certain way or not say anything or not have feelings but the um reality of it is that you know you just have to be who you are and so i'm just thankful that both mom and dad were so um instrumental and in allowing us just to be us and just to be whoever we were going to be perfectly stated and i've always said when you have x ex- when expectations meet reality uh, there's a gap and what we choose to place in the gap would either make us better or make us bitter. And as you can see, being well-rounded and having that stable home life allowed us to manage those expectations so that we don't turn out bitter. Um, As a PK, as a PK, preacher's kid, for for context, um, what is the one thing that you wished that you spent more time doing when you were younger? Led, I know you started, man, preaching early, and we've all been in ministry all of our lives. So what's the one thing you wish you spent more time doing when you were younger? Um, I don't really know, because as, as, I, as I said, anything that I wanted to do, uh, my parents pushed us to do it. Um, at one point, I wanted to be a cartoonist and do voiceovers. Uh, I was going to go to the Art Institute. My father bought me and uh, all my drawing pads and let me take them to the church and told me, he, he's mad at me now that I don't draw like I used to mm. for therapeutic and, and, and you know, uh, relaxation purposes. Uh, instruments, he bought instruments. When I wanted to play football, he fought my mother to let me play football. Whatever I wanted to do, 
he fully invested in and helped me do it. So I didn't, I don't feel like I missed out on anything. Mm. And the blessing was church was church and home was home with dad. So I didn't feel like, I mean, we, we clearly knew the line of pastor and father because he never, he never made it convoluted. My God. And that's such great balance. Um, anyone else? What is, what is it? Something that you wish that you spent more time doing when you were younger? Because our dad was similar, um, supported us dearly in our pursuits, whether it was sports, uh, school, or any other activities. Uh, never pushed preaching or pastoring on any of us, allowed us to live our lives so that we could have at least a semblance of normalcy as as preachers' kids. So I concur. I don't miss much, didn't miss out on much, and tried to do the same in rearing our children. Uh, anyone else would like to speak to that, or are we agreeing that we are certainly on the same path? I think mine was more personal. It wasn't um, the ministry that stopped me from doing things. It was just me um, because I was – creating in my mind that I needed to be something else other than the pastor's kid. So I started playing volleyball, then I quit. I wish I would have stayed in that more um, in softball. Because when we got to the high school years, dad didn't, um, and this might be going into another question for later on, but if we had practice or we had games or things like that, Bible class was on Tuesday, so we wouldn't make it. So I started doing like the, oh, I got practice. Oh, I ain't gonna have to go to Bible class. So I stopped doing a lot of things because I had the freedom. And I wish I would have stuck with something or pushed more for something in my teenage years and maybe I'll be in a different position now. So it wasn't ministry that did it, it was me. Mm. Mm. That's good. Uh, that's very insightful. And it really takes uh, a mature person to reflect in such a manner to own up to that. And so I want to personally commend you for that and um, we're definitely going to talk a little bit uh, more about ministry uh, before we pivot and shift gears on on some of the personal pursuits which I'm excited uh, about that but what I'd like to 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 ask at this particular time um, what's the what's the most surprising fact that you've learned about yourself? from growing up as a PK up until now? Hmm, that's good. <laughs> the most surprising. That I, I guess for me, I would say that um, that the, of the hidden talents that I had, because I just didn't, you, you know, as kind of growing up, you were kind of, you know, limited in what you can do. You can be a sing, you can you can sing in a choir, you can yeah. be an usher, you can be a nurse. Uh, <laughs> you can do those things, but... Uh, you know, but there are some, there were so many other things that you could do in the ministry. There were so many other things that you could do for Christ. And so, um, the biggest surprise for me were the hidden gifts that I, that I have and that are yet still evolving. And so I feel like if you just stay open, man, God is going to literally blow your mind. Hidden gifts, hidden gifts. I, I have to stick a pin right there. Hidden gifts such as. What hidden gifts are you specifically uh, referencing? What, what we, uh, we'd like to know that. What what hidden gifts? Uh, you know, just again how things are evolving. So I just feel like you know, for me, I have a I have this um, this knack for thinking outside of the box. I have this, um, you know, I see things differently, um, and you know, and I'm not afraid to kind of pursue those things. And so, um, I think just the way that I think critically, and the way that I just try to put put puzzles and pieces together. And so, um, especially now that we are hybrid, you know, I just it just makes my heart just flutter just knowing all the possibilities. You know, it's by me working in the school, and I'm seeing how technology is integrated in the school system. I'm like, we can do this in church, and you know, just taking what I'm learning over here and what I'm doing over here and actually applying into ministry just so that we can be better. Wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. Anyone else want to take a stab at that? Most surprising uh, fact. I am the super emotional one in the family. Yeah. And uh, they always talk about me for that. I am <laughs> very, very no. sensitive, very no. emotional. <laughs> Found out recently that my nickname from them is Woo Woo. 
but uh, <laughs> um, but <laughs> the most surprising thing is my emotional side and my sensitive side actually helps my husband. My husband is not the most sensitive person. So sometimes once he says things, I have to like come back in, you know, sweeten it up for him. So surprisingly, my little emotional and sensitive side actually works for me mm. at my husband's ministry. <laughs> I love it. I love it. That's a great balance. Reminds me so much of, of my mom and, and yeah. dad's relationship um, because they were certainly polar opposites. And, you know, it reminds me also of, of, of sister stores, man. I, for those who really know me, know I, I love deeply and, and I go deep in relationships, which probably is why, you know, that circle remains somewhat small. And so to know me is to know he, he loves and cares deeply, but may not show it in, in an affectionate way or may come across a stoic or, aloof or all of the above and so man my wife um i i i I call her the cleanup woman not in a negative sense (laughs) because uh because i'm so straightforward and i'm so stoic uh she has that same gifting to say now what 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 it really meant is <laughs> or or give it another look or another twist so sister girl i get that i get that and uh, we can become so narrow focused that we we miss the mark so uh I, we appreciate you all for having that for having that quality we appreciate you all she see she just commented <laughs> she's that way as well so so that is wonderful don't get it but i hope he's get it now oh man we're working on it we are works in progress we're works in progress if you don't mind i would like if you would uh, subscribe to the clarence stores leadership podcast and if you don't mind give us a five star rating because we're bringing five star material (laughs) shameless plug i can't wait to see you And I can't wait for you to join us. Have a wonderful day. You've been listening to the Clarence Stores Leadership Podcast. Join us next time for more insights on becoming 1% better each day and leveling up in all areas of life.